Hi there. My name is Gordon Carlson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research. I wanted to take just a few minutes to explain the work we're doing in conceptual logistics. I'm calling this talk the carrot and the stick, because by the end of it, I hope you'll know what the stick is, the reason you need it, and the carrot, the reason you want it. To give you a quick idea of what I'll be talking about, first I'll explain what conceptual logistics is and what we mean when we say the words conceptual and logistics. Second, I'll explain the stick, why communication research needs conceptual logistics. And finally, I'll talk about the carrot, the reason that people in communication research are probably going to want conceptual logistics. So let's start off with a simple thought exercise. Close your eyes, relax, and think about a chair. Okay, got something in your mind? What was it? Was it something like this? We ask people wherever we go to imagine a chair in their head. And a lot of people will give us an answer like this, something with four legs, a solid surface to sit on, and a back. But the more people we ask, the more varied the answers. Some other people might imagine a chair like this, something that's soft and comfortable and leans back. But the more people we ask, the more varied the responses. In fact, there are many different ways that people tell us they conceptualize a chair. So even though we all use the same word to talk about these things, many different people think about that idea in many different ways. Well, it turns out we do the same thing in communication research. In communication research, we pull from many, many different fields. In fact, we deal with many different ways of thinking about an idea, depending on the field we're drawing from and the context of the research we're trying to work in. Communication research can easily pull from other fields, such as philosophy, sociology, linguistics, computer science, medicine, biology, cultural studies, journalism, and any number of other related fields. Now this is a very complicated process, but it's something that communication researchers do every single day. The problem is how to connect these things, because each of them can be connected in any number of ways, but doing so is incredibly difficult. So we at the Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research are looking for a solution, something we can do that will make this process easier. We call this cure Conceptual Logistics. Concepts, meaning ideas, and logistics, meaning the way that we connect those ideas, in much the same way that the government or a military has to employ logistics to connect its various resources, in communication research, we also have to connect our conceptual resources. Conceptual logistics is a pedagogical approach that treats students as creative researchers using interactive, online, and multimodal alternatives to teaching materials like textbooks. It's not so much a method as it is an attitude, a disposition to engage problems that require research by learning how to conceptualize them in ways that make them come alive through the intervention of lively minds. So let's start with the stick. Why is it that we need a system through which to connect lots of different ideas? Traditional institutions have always existed in communication research. These might be departments within universities, these might be funding agencies within governments, or it could be the regional, national, and international organizations that try to facilitate communication research. The problem with these institutions is that sometimes they become exclusionary. What fits into the institution's traditions in one group may not fit into the traditions of another group. And this means that two ideas, which are necessarily connected to one another, may not fit well within the institution and thus many ideas are forced to live outside of these proverbial firewalls. The Society for Conceptual Logistics and Communication Research is attempting to provide a safe haven where these connections can be made, not by replacing traditional institutions, but by offering another location, another place where these ideas can come together and important connections can be made between one idea and another idea. One of the ways that we like to think about this is the difference between the word term and the word concept. 
Traditionally, a term is a word or phrase that has a singular black and white definition. For example, if you open up the dictionary, you're given terms and their definitions. Now, some terms may have more than one definition based on context, but generally speaking, terms are given singular meanings, especially within individual research fields. But this creates a lot of problems, because while it may be simple to have terms and definitions, this isn't how the real world functions. In reality, we think in concepts. And so we're interested in how concepts can be used in communication research. A singular concept, just like the chair that we started off with, can be conceptualized in many different ways, based on the context in which the concept is being worked with. So here's the carrot. Now that we know why we need to think about these different connections, the carrot is why we would want to. Our Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research is broken into three parts. First, the society, second, a toolkit, and third, an upcoming journal. The society is a place where members can work together to solve problems in conceptual logistics. That is, figure out ways to logistically connect the various conceptions that are used in communication research. But in order to do this, we have to have methods, approaches, and tools to support it. And so we're working on a toolkit that's full of different ideas, methods, approaches, and online tools to help researchers and students conduct conceptual logistics activities. And finally, we're working on an open access online e-journal that will allow people to contribute very different kinds of work than print-oriented journals traditionally do. The society, the toolkit, and the journal work in tandem. But in order to explain the carrot, or why you would want to use conceptual logistics, let me focus for just a moment on the toolkit and show you a couple examples of the tools we provide on our website. This is the homepage for the Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research, and I wanted to take just a moment to show you a quick sneak peek at some of the things that we're working on. From the home page here, the very first thing you have access to is the concept database. The concept database is the flagship project of the Society for Conceptual Logistics. You come to the database and you say that you want to learn more about a communication concept. So for example, we'll look up the uh, concept of frame. And you'll notice that what you get here is not a single definition for the word frame, but instead you get concepts which are conceptually based on the communication research concept of frame or framing. And so, for example, I'll come down here and I'll show you what you get if you look at framing. Instead of getting a single definition for framing, you get multiple definitions, or more importantly, conceptualizations for how framing has been used over time in communication research. You get Robert Entman's 1993 notion of framing. You get Deborah Tannen's 1993 notion of framing. But you also, and this is important, get Robert Entman's 2003 conception of framing. And the reason this is important is because Robert Entman, one of the people most famously associated with the concept of framing in communication research, himself changed the way he conceived of this notion. And so rather than provide a single solitary definition, we recognize the fact that these conceptions change over time based on concepts, concepts just as Robert Entman did. If you were to click on Robert Entman's 1993 definition of framing, you would see an entry in the concept database that will help a student or researcher learn and get some insight into how Robert Entman uh, conceptualized the framing in 1993. From this, you can see the citation that would allow you to uh, look up his original work, and you can see the embedded concepts that Robert Entman relied on when he was conceiving of framing in 1993. If you scroll further down the page, you'll have access to visual tools, rankings, and the context of use that Robert Entman was using. If you jump to other parts of the concept database, you'll be linked to a set of very important visualizations. One of the visualizations we offer is what we call concept webs. This is an example of a concept web. This is narrative uh, as published in 2004. You can see that the central concept of narrative draws on other related concepts such as encoding, story worlds, previous experiences, uh, and temporally ordered things. 
And then you can see what concepts those concepts rely on. Because in reality, we know that research comes from conceptualizations that draw on the relationships between this concept and another concept. And this can be visualized in a concept web. So conceptual logistics can be visualized in one way as a concept web that connects one concept to another to another. To give you another example, here is a second concept web. This one is slightly more complicated. It's for the concept of narrative function from 1987. You can see what concepts it derives from, what concepts it's related to, and the interaction, that is the logistical interaction, between various concepts and conceptions over time in the field of communication research. Aside from concept webs, we also work on other tools. For example, the SELCR library, which is a collection of multimedia items related to the concepts of the database, so that students and faculty can see images, videos, presentations, documents, journal entries, and other modes of accessing the information embedded within a given concept. In order to help unravel and unpack a complicated idea, we provide visualizations and the like that will allow people to better understand what's going on. We also have a system that connects with Wordle to create word clouds. And this is a very easy way of recognizing the important concepts m embedded within a given conception by simply using uh, a visualization that allows you to see how often and how importantly words are used when describing that concept. So you can see that the SCLCR concept database and its various visualization tools offer an important insight into how various concepts connect to other concepts. And this conception process that we call conceptualization is very important to understanding how problems get solved in the field of communication research. Thanks for taking a few minutes to learn about the Society for Conceptual Logistics in Communication Research. You can learn more about what we do by visiting our website at www.sclcr.com. We have many tools, we have many documents, and we have many places for collaboration. Every single thing on the site is completely free, completely open access, and we encourage, in fact even rely on, collaborative efforts. So we look forward to hearing from you and hopefully working with you in the future. Thanks.